Welcome back to the Bukla series. Today we will take a look at the Bukla 266 Source of Uncertainty. Before I start, just a quick reminder. Um, this 266 was built by me using a SAM modular kit, so it may have uh, some differences with uh, yours or with uh, vintage Bukla modules. So don't hesitate to leave a comment if some uh, of his behavior seem awkward to you knowing uh, your experience. The Bukla 266 packs a lot of features in one module. So we'll take a look at um, the different parts of the module one by one. First of all, let's start with the noise source. The 266 offers three flavors of noise. Let's listen to them. So we've got a flat noise here. A minus 3 dB per octave noise. And finally, a plus 3 dB per octave noise. Then we've got two fluctuating random voltages that can output as said random voltages. So let's hear on the pitch what they sound like. So they move between random values at random speeds, but you can increase the speed using this knob or this CV input. And their speed is quite different even if with random, it's always hard to, to hear. The third part offers two quantized random voltages. When you power up your uh, modular, um, there are already voltages that are uh, generated in the module. So let's try this with the pitch. It may be too high to be heard. Yes, it's very high. And as you can see, I can scroll between these values. I won't go into detail concerning uh, mathematical formulas behind the module. What you have to know is uh, that whenever it gets a gate high at this input, it will generate new quantized voltages. So let's try this with a pulse from the 245. So, with this knob that can be CV controlled, you will enter um, the, the amount of changing, changes we, we get. So at the lower, lowest value, we will only get two different values. So let's try this with our module, our VCO. Uh, I will use the CV input so that I can at attenuate the output because 10 volts is a bit too high to, to hear the result. So let's hear this. So here, as you can see, at the lowest value, we have two different values. I can speed up the process. And 
And if I increase this knob, I will get more and more values up to 64. On this output, the values are equally distributed between 0 and 10 volts. You have as much chance to get any value between 0 and 10 volts. Whereas on this output, as you can see on this graph, um, the values will be focused on the center value. So you won't have uh, uh, as much extreme values as with this output. Let's try this. Okay. We can also use, we don't have necessary to use a clock, we can use a pulse output from my 218 for example, and each time I will press a key, new quantized voltage will be generated. So let's try to hear that. same here, except that, as I said before, the random values will be more um, evenly distributed. And of course, you always get access to this knob. Let's try from this output. It will be more relevant. And I can generate, pressing a key, new voltages. which means I can use, for example, a cycling envelope from my 281 to modulate this value. And each time I press a key, I will get a new set of random voltages. Let's try this. I will press another key. And press once more. And once more. I'm sorry, I know the 218 is out of range for you. But each time you hear new values means I've pressed a key. Okay. Now let's look at the fourth part of the 266, the stored random voltages. You also need a gate to generate new uh, output, but as you can see when the module starts, you already get values. So, let's try this, as before with our oscillator. So, um, on this output, you will get random values equally distributed all across the, um, the spectrum, between 0 and 10 volts. And once more, I'm using the FM input of my oscillator to attenuate the values since zero, 0 to 10 volts is a bit too high to really hear what it does. I'm using so a clock of my 245 and let's hear what happens if I start the clock. So 
I get totally random values between 0 and 10 volts that are equally distributed. On the second output, the values will be distributed according to this knob position. So, if the knob is fully counterclockwise, you will get lower value. When you get halfway, you will get something like this, more middle values. And if you get all the way up, you will get higher values. So, let's hear with our oscillator. So as you can hear, the values are quite, quite low. Random values are higher and higher. And of course, you can control this knob using this CV input. I like to use this output to control random access to sequences. So um, I will use this output to control access to a 16-step sequence from the 248, the MARF. So let's plug this output to the external stage access of the MARF and then get the voltage output to the CV input of my oscillator. I will first of all disconnect this banana jack so that we can hear um, the, the, the seven steps, the 16 sorry, steps of my sequence. So here is my oscillator and I will scroll through, manually scroll through the 16 steps. I have two identical values. Okay, so now I'm choosing external input to control this with my stored random voltage. As you can see, it stays on the lower values of my sequence, and if I rise this value. As you can see, I'm more into the center. And if I raise, I will get higher values. I think it's it's a nice way to to control pseudo random sequences. The fifth part of the 266 is the in integrator. Um, the name isn't really um, a standard right now uh, to fully understand what it is. It is a slew limiter. So let's try this with our quantized random voltages. So I will take a clock to generate random voltages. I will put that... Oh, no, let's try with stored random voltages with the first output that distributed all the values. So let's hear what it sounds like without anything else uh, into our FM input. So remember, we get this. So stepped values on each clock input, it generates a new value. So now we will go through the integrator, which is a slew limiter. So. I will get this value, get into the input of the integrator, 
and the output of the integrator goes, goes into the FM input of my oscillator. So at minimum value, we can't hear, really hear any slow limiting, but if I increase the value, slow the pulse this uh, the timing the timing of uh, the integrator can be controlled with this knob but it, it can also be controlled with the CV input and I found that uh, using this CV input, you can further increase the time uh, of uh, the slow limiting. You can go uh, way up this, this value, this time value. The last part of the 266 is the sample and hold circuit. It is quite a usual circuit in uh, synthesis, but you'll see that this one has uh, some tricks up its sleeve. So let's start with a sample. Um, let's so let's start with a usual sample and hold patch. So um, I will use the clock output of my 245 once more and put it into the pulse input right here. And I will use a CV output of a fluctuating random voltage. Let's just to have a reference here what it sounds like in the, F the FM input of my oscillator. So I will use that signal to be simple and old. So I patch it into the CV input and then I will get the CV out. So as any sample and hold circuit, it will sample on each pulsar input the value from its input and outputs uh, this value. So we'll get from a fluctuating uh, random voltage, a stepped random voltage. Let's hear. And if I increase the speed, just to compare the original signal. Okay. The difference between classical sample and hold circuits are these alternate outputs. So to, to get it, I, I will have to, to patch three different uh, sources so that we can hear what's happening. So uh, let's do this patch. I will need more cables and it will take a few time to patch it, but so I will take a noise that will go through the 291 filter to get something like a hi-hat. So and get the same pulse that goes into my sample and hold. So I get this. Okay, and now we will hear this alternating pulse output. So, on first, you, you can say that you, can, you, you get even and odd uh, outputs. So, I will trigger two other envelopes to hear that with two different oscillators so that we can hear what's happening. OK. 
Okay, so I will... Oh, let's try with this. So, we get this oscillator whose pitch is controlled by um, the sample and hold output. And if I'm controlling um, this envelope, so you can hear that I get only one of two um, pulses. And if I listen to this second oscillator, we'll have the other pulse opening this Lopez gate. So as you can clearly see with the LED, the pulse output opens this envelope that plays the noise and the even ones opens this and the odd ones this one. And finally we will listen to this <coughs> uh, CV out alt output so just to remember here on each, oh, let's keep our hi-hat. And you will hear that if I use this alt output, I will have uh, a CV change every two steps. So let's hear, if I get, if I use this one, it changes every steps. Okay, and with this one, every two steps, and this one, every two other steps. So let's hear with another oscillator. may not be um, the most beautiful composition, but as you can see, it offers a lot of flexibility and possibilities with a simple sample and hold circuit. Okay, so that's all for today with the 266. As always, uh, please like and subscribe and don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, thank you and see you next time!